Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're here to talk about low ground pressure. What is ground pressure? What does low ground pressure mean? And why do we need to know that in the excavating field? All good questions. So what is ground pressure? Ground pressure is literally that. It's the pressure that we are exerting on the ground with our machine. So let's take our nice little 2050 dozer here. If we put this down on our field, oh my goodness, that's a lot of weight and it's taking up a relatively small footprint, if you think about it. I have no idea how much this dozer weighs in real life, but if you can see, this thing's got some pretty narrow tracks on it. Versus, I have this little D5K here, and he's a littler dozer, significantly smaller, because these are both the same scale. You can see the size difference. But look at the tracks. If you look at the tracks, the tracks are actually about the same width. And what that does for us is it takes this little dinky dozer and it spreads its weight over more of the ground versus this big dozer. We're keeping that weight really concentrated to a very, two very narrow areas here. Why is that important to understand? Well, low ground pressure is a track configuration that you can get on a lot of your dozers. And the whole idea is we want to spread that weight across the ground. We want to make it like snowshoes. If you think about how a snowshoe works, we've got our foot. And when we set it down in the snow, because we've got this tiny little footprint, our foot pushes right down into that snow. It's going to sink all the way to the bottom. But if we put on a snowshoe and we make our foot like five times bigger, well, now we're spreading that pressure out. And so we can kind of ride on top of the snow. That's exactly the same concept behind an LGP configuration dozer or excavator. Excavators also have the ability to put bigger or smaller track pads on them. And the reason we want that is because we want flotation. If you're like me and you live in a wet state where you deal with a lot of mud all the time, LGP is actually a really useful track configuration because we don't want to get bogged down in the mud. We don't want to go into these soft spots and sink. We want to be able to ride over top of them. So what's the disadvantage to LGB tracks? Well, the problem is the more you dissipate your weight, the less digging in power, if you will, your tracks have into the dirt. And this is really easy to, to conceptualize. So let's take this pen, for instance, and let's pretend my, my hand is the ground. If I stab this pen into the ground and try to drag it, well, first of all, that's really going to hurt my hand. But if we're in the ground, it's going to be really hard to drag that pin across the ground because the nose of this is pretty fine. We're able to focus all of my weight on a very small area and we're able to kind of get some penetration of the dirt. We're actually really able to get it down in there versus if I take this big old fat block from my kid's playroom and I try to smash that down into the dirt, I can push as hard as I want and I'm still going to be able to drag that thing across the ground just fine because I can't get any penetration. I can't get down into the dirt. It's not spreading the dirt out of the way and, and where I can really get a good grip. I'm just doing exactly what we just talked about. I'm floating over the top of the surface. And so I'm never going to be able to dig in. Well, the same concept applies when we're talking about our dozers. If you're in a really heavy bulking application and you want to be able to push a lot of material, you don't want LGP tracks because what happens is it spreads your weight out and you're not able to really push down into that dirt with the weight of the machine to get those grousers to really dig into your dirt. Instead, what happens is you're spreading that, that all of that weight out and it just starts to scoot the top layer of dirt underneath your tracks. That's why you spin a lot more when you're in an LGP machine in dirt is because you're spreading that weight out and it's actually making it easier for the tracks to turn versus in one of these mamas where you got a lot of weight and a very narrow track gauge. Pay attention, everyone who likes the big dozers, the D10s, the D11s, those are all gonna have, for the most part, pretty narrow tracks. And it's because those are made for very firm applications. You're not going to run into a soft spot, or at least you shouldn't be if you're running one of those big dozers. And instead, it's all about push power. We want to get that track as narrow as possible. It's still got to be practical and support the machine and, and give you a little bit of flotation, but we want to get it pretty stinking narrow so that we can apply as much force to the ground as possible to really dig our grousers in so that we can push that big mound of dirt. So all this to say, it is a common misconception out there that a tracked skid steer is going to push more snow in the wintertime than a wheeled skid steer. That is 
at first glance, that sounds really great. It's like, yeah, that would absolutely make sense. In reality, everyone that's ever tried it will, will tell you very quickly, that's not the case at all. You push a lot less snow because you're spreading the weight of the machine out. Now there's a key concept to understand there because I know a lot of people are gonna scratch their heads and they're gonna put down in the comments, that's absolutely false, oh, absolutely false. The problem is we are, we're thinking about friction rather than the actual power of the machine to kind of dig in. So if you think about it, let's go back to our block again. If this were, if my hand, instead of being my hand, were, were just bare asphalt, so it's got a lot of grippiness, right? Well, if I put that block in there and I put a lot of weight on it and I try to move it, yeah, that's gonna be kind of hard to move. Now, I'm gonna go back to my pen because if I dig my pen in in that application, it's gonna be dang near impossible to move, right? So it still applies. But there's still this weird concept that, but Brian, it's gonna be hard to move with that block shoved down into the asphalt. Well, you're right, because of friction. If we could make our rubber tracks on our skid steer always come into contact with that asphalt while we're pushing snow, then I will switch my argument and say, absolutely, a track machine would push a little better because you're able to get more friction across a longer surface. But again, you're still spreading the weight of the machine out. So even though we've got a lot of friction on this block, if I've only got a little weight right here on top, we've now spread that weight across this whole thing. So the ground isn't feeling that weight. But if we've got, you know, call it, we've got a one pound weight on this and we've spread it across this whole area. If I have one pound weight on this sucker, you know for a fact the ground's gonna feel that pressure and it's gonna stab right in. So that's why there's this big misconception that track machines are gonna push snow better. It's not the case at all. It just fools you because you start thinking about the friction component instead of what it's actually doing with the material. So as always, I hope this helps. I hope it kind of helps you to understand some of the concepts as to why we need LGP dozers, why LGB tracks are even a thing, and why we don't have LGB tracks on every single dozer in the field. It doesn't make sense to do that. So I hope this has been helpful. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.